So um, my name is Dan Schmidt. I'm a, uh, a researcher and a postdoctoral fellow in Matt van der Heiden's lab here at the Koch Institute. And as some of you know, I split my time between the laboratory and the clinic, where I specialize in the treatment of prostate cancer with radiotherapy. Uh, so my uh, interest in, uh, as a physician scientist is in really understanding the molecular me mechanisms of cancer and being able to translate the findings that we discover in the laboratory to the clinic. So radiotherapy has been around for more than 50 years. Uh, unlike surgery, radiotherapy is non-invasive. And so we use it when we need to treat cancers that are in tricky locations uh, or in patients that are not good surgical candidates. Uh, we'll also use radiotherapy when we need to treat um, uh, cancers after surgery. So when you're worried about cancer cells being left behind, radiation can be used to sterilize the surgical bed of any cancer remnants that have been left behind. So shown in the image um, is uh, was the colorectum. Sorry, I'm going to go back to that. Uh, this is the colorectum of a mouse that's been treated with a focal targeted beam of gamma radiation. And here we use molecular imaging to show that the targeted radiation beam only affects DNA in the nucleus of cells that are within the targeted region, shown here by the pink cell, the pink nuclei, and doesn't affect the nuclei of cells that are outside of the radiation beam. And so this is really a beautiful example of how we can target radiation and, and focally damage DNA um, uh, with, uh, with high energy radiation uh, beam. So this experiment was done as a part of a series of studies uh, that examined how to best model uh, therapeutic radiation in mice. Shown here is a top and a side view of a radiation beam uh, targeting the prostate, uh, prostate cancer in a mouse. Uh, the prostate cancer lies right here, and the colorectum that you saw in that previous image lies right behind the prostate. Uh, so we use the mouse as a model system because it allows us to examine how cancer treatment affects not only the tumor cells, but also normal tissues that surround the tumor. Uh, this is particularly important when we consider potentially curative therapy uh, because side effects caused by damage to normal tissues can frequently limit the efficacy of treatment. Ionizing radiation, as was used in this study, uh, is a very powerful treatment that at the right dose can kill virtually any cancer cell. However, however radiation has some downsides. One issue is that it has to pass through normal tissues to get to the tumor, and by doing so can injure these tissues. So herein lies the challenge. How do how can we use radiation to destroy tumor cells and yet leave non-tumor cells intact? We believe that the answer is in combining radiation with molecular targeted therapies. These are small molecule drugs that are designed to bind to specific targets in cancer cells uh, and thereby affect their growth. The problem is that they can also bind to related targets in normal cells and thereby can themselves induce side effects and toxicity. Moreover, cancer cells are smart. They can learn how to downregulate the target, resulting in acquired resistance. However, we believe if we combine molecular targeted therapy with spatially targeted radiation, we can have a chance of completely eradicating tumors and at the same time minimize toxicity. So going forward, we're very excited to leverage our preclinical platform to test combination therapies, uh, at which we hope will lead to more effective treatments with less side effects. So with that, I'd like to thank, uh, I'd like to acknowledge the people uh, involved in the work. Uh, I'd like to thank, of course, Dr. Van der Heiden, whose laboratory this uh, research was done in, uh, my partner in crime, Iva uh, Germanica, who's here today, uh, and I'm sure is happy to answer any questions uh, at the, at uh, at the reception afterwards. Um, I'd like to also uh, thank a diverse group of uh, radiation oncologists, radiation biologists, medical physicists, who are all involved in helping to develop a platform uh, that was used to, to generate the image that I showed you today. Uh, I'd like to also acknowledge uh, folks from the cores here at, at the KI, uh, both in the histology core and the imaging core facility who helped uh, in the development of the platform. Thank you very much.